as you all know by now, and it seems to be news every single week at this point, uh, Microsoft is still in the midst of purchasing Activision Blizzard. They're looking at getting approvals from regulators all across the world in order to finalize it. And it looks as if some regulation docs are being leaked to the press. And one uh, got leaked recently, uh, as of today, I believe. And the do and the docs seem to show the amount of revenue that Microsoft is making off of Game Pass, uh, specifically in the year 2021. According to this doc, Microsoft allegedly made $2.9 billion worth of revenue last year alone just off Game Pass subscriptions. This is an this is very interesting because uh, for two reasons. One, we've all wondered how much money this is making Microsoft and it looks like we know now. And two, uh, some questions were asked as to why they never announced this because this is a huge number. Uh and that's something you might want to gloat about to to show people that your brand is still very strong. Because you're earning almost three billion in revenue a year on Game Pass. So zero, what did you think when you heard that Microsoft was making so much money off of Game Pass last year? Um, as far as my thought on it, um, my my thought was, well, kind of. Uh, this is kind of the obvious reason why just Microsoft can can tout off to the the gaming industry. Yeah, just um, Game Pass gives so much value to the gamers and. Um, and this is in spite of um, Jim Ryan constantly just kind of poo-pooing Game Pass going, oh, Game Pass is, is not sustainable for the industry and stuff like that. And there's another concern. I'll get to it in a second. But, mm. yeah, just it's the one thing that I've heard constantly from people who are really, really entrenched in, like, the PlayStation camp of, well, you know, just – Game Pass, uh, Game Pass isn't good. I mean, it um, it doesn't do much, and it likely hurts um, hurts Xbox more than helps them. And it's just like uh, Microsoft and and specifically Phil Spencer's talked about just the conversion rate of basically turning people who may have just played a game on Game Pass for free for a couple months, and then the minute that it's announced, oh, by the way, you know that game that was on Game Pass that you liked so much and was free. We're unfortunately taking it away from Game Pass, so um, yeah, last chance, uh, last chance to buy it before before it goes away. And oh, if you um, because it's a Game Pass title, if you subscribe to Game Pass, you get a bonus ten percent off. And of course, people buy up, yeah. and and it's just it was just one of those things that that um, at least um, with my business analysis hat on, I just look at it and go, yeah, you know, just. This is a software as a service tack, you know, just um, lose money uh, on the on the initial start of the subscription, but you eventually just earn the money back and maybe then some, especially when you have people who may be obsessed with a game that is on Game Pass for a limited amount of time. And then Microsoft pulls the announcement of, hey, um, we are unfortunately going to lose this game off of Game Pass, but if you want to keep it, um, buy it now and you get a bonus 10% off and I mean, it's just an easy upsell. It, and that's really what it is. It's just such an easy upsell to just get somebody who has maybe enjoyed a game that's been on game pass for three months, six months, a year, two years, just to immediately get them to convert and go, I got to have this game. I love this game. I played it for X number of time and I just got to have it. So oh. uh, for me, it was just kind of obvious. It was just like, yeah, no wonder um, Microsoft likes to say Game Pass is a great value because it sure makes them a bunch of money for the time being. Right. And like you mentioned this, or I don't think you mentioned this specifically, but the $2.9 billion that is being talked about is just on subscriptions. They don't talk about the revenue they make from the, the discount that they give for having Game Pass for these games, for, for purchasing them. So that's not mentioned, but I can imagine that that sales number is pretty damn good because uh, and that's I think that's what I think a lot of game companies find attractive about Game Pass, because 
yeah, you could go to PlayStation and say, hey, make it your game of the month this month on Plus. But then all you're getting is that contract, that money contract from Sony. And that's it. You're not getting anything else. Whereas with Microsoft, you're not only getting that money from a contract, you're also going to get the sales. So, like, for example, uh, something that came out today, uh, Ark Survival, of, uh, Survival Evolved. Uh, that went on PlayStation Plus a, a number of months ago. And Sony paid $3.5 million to put it on their, on their PlayStation Plus as a free game for the month. Well, Microsoft came in and said, okay, put that on our Game Pass and, and we'll pay you $2.5 million. And they took it. And why do you think that is? Because they probably looked at that and said, okay, but if we have our game on there for a few months and people like it, we're not only getting the $2.5 million from the contract, but we're also getting sales. Especially since not only is people are able to play it for free when they have it, well, technically free and they have the subscription, but if they want it bad enough and they like it enough, they'll purchase the game. So that that's the best of both worlds there. They're getting money twice for the same purchase so that's what makes i think the the game pass very attractive to some developers now if your game's not very good and people play it and go eh, i'm not interested you know then you're screwed and you're gonna get that you're just gonna get that contract money but if you're you have a good game and you believe that your game is good like i don't i i only see it as a boon really for that publisher like imagine if uh, no Man's Sky de- decides to put it on Game Pass. I think it is that, on Game Pass, actually. It is on Game Pass, really? Yeah. I can. If imagine. I remember correctly, um, they or, did put on Game Pass. Or maybe was it on Game Pass and it's not anymore? Um, I don't remember I, seeing it on console. Um, I believe it is on Game Pass because um, they had made a big, a big splash about it saying hey it's coming to xbox um try it out with game pass it is on you're right it is on game pass okay i can imagine that these guys are gonna make a good amount of money while it's on game pass like uh, especially when it's time to time for the, for it to lapse because that's also a forever game where you can constantly play that game over and over again and if someone's addicted enough they'll purchase the game so that's yep. that's great like I I think that's like fantastic and it's a great deal and it's something Sony should really start consider emulating at this point because if they they can go off to the blue in the face about how you know people want to purchase games for seventy dollars that's bullshit because if you give them the option to get the game for a subscription and play it they'd rather do that uh, I I think at least I to me, it would make sense that if you had the subscription and Horizon Forbidden West came out day and date as the $70 game, I think a lot of people would rather play it on the subscription than buy the $70 game. Maybe I'm stupid. I don't know. But I think that's what a lot of people would prefer to do. Yeah. And I mean, for me, um, Game Pass has been great uh, with introducing new games to me because um, I'm a bit on a limited budget. And um, with paying just the 16, 16 bucks a month with tax and everything. Um, it's basically like an unlimited Netflix subscription to just video games, and I can download, try stuff. Um, I can play stuff via the Xbox X Cloud beta that's going on for mobile phones and tablets. So uh, it's great because I can try something, and if it's not for me, I can go, okay, well, great. I didn't blow 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 bucks on this game that would have not been a great purchase for me. Yeah. And uh, it's been great uh, to that end, but um I do see, you know, the other side of the coin um with what other people have gripes about stuff like Game Pass of um you know just uh, this might show greedy publishers and developers, hey, um you can do a online rental platform sort of a thing so that gamers never actually get to own the game and just all they do is just just um uh, churn churn through your games and everything, and you know there will be no video games to keep when the servers go offline and stuff like that. So yeah, I mean I see the other side of the coin, but um, at this time Game Pass doesn't doesn't really operate on that model of just 
um, the only way to play this game is to rent it from the service and to keep your Game Pass subscription going until uh, it, um, in perpetuity. Whereas Game Pass provides you the ability to say, I like this game enough that I want to buy a copy of it and keep it on my Xbox or my PC. Right. And I think the other advantage with uh, Game Pass is that you've got a lot of games that have um, the Xbox Play Anywhere program enabled on them. So if you buy it, then you get it on multiple platforms. Um, a great example of this is No Man's Sky. On the Xbox Store, it advertises that it is uh, that it does have um, Xbox Play Anywhere, and also you've got cloud saves and cross-platform multiplayer to boot. So for the current uh, for the current price of thirty dollars right now, um, because the game is going on sale due to the version four point patch, you get a copy that's eligible for Xbox One, Xbox Series S and X, and PC, hmm. and 30 bucks to buy one game over three platforms technically that's that's a really hard hard deal to beat <laughs> yeah definitely uh, sony needs to start uh competing in this area uh they they need to start making that service a lot more attractive because after it was released in june the the, the new playstation plus stuff they have i haven't heard a peep about people enjoying the service like I, I haven't heard no. anybody and it's, talk about it. And it's really funny too because Sony had made this big big push of, oh, we've got a we've got a huge vintage catalog of PlayStation One games that'll be uh, quickly becoming available on on the new uh, PlayStation Plus uh, platform and everything. And there really hasn't been much movement since the initial launch. Yeah. So it's not looking good on um, on being a compelling reason to tell people to upgrade their PlayStation Plus service. Yeah, and if the re if the regulators decide to allow Activision to purchase Activision Blizzard, it would be on. It, it would be a smart move for Sony and Jim Ryan if he's still there after this. Um, it would be smart for Sony to then start emulating Game Pass like to the T allowing their first party games to be released day and date, giving discounts and being a lot more competitive with how much money they give to I would say other developers because they they need to start competing because if they continue on the track they're at right now, I think that uh, it will just give X, it will give Game Pass more ground to basically own the market. And then when they finally start realizing, oh, we need to start competing, it'll be too late. Like, I think they should have, I think when they announced this PlayStation Plus thing, they should have started then. And probably even sooner before that. But b because they're hedging their bets and they're, I would say, pussyfooting a little bit and saying, well, we'll do it, but we'll do it our way. No one wants it your way. They want the way that that xbox has and this is clear as to the amount of money they're making in revenue i do want to point out though okay i have not read that the amount of revenue they're making is making game pass profitable and I, we need to point that out because the the amount of money in revenue is fantastic but if they are spending like th two and a half million on getting a game like Ark Survival Evolved, and I know it's a popular game, but it's a small game, really. But if they're spending that much on that game, I can't imagine what they're spending on something like No Man's Sky or on other, I would say, bigger title, bigger-ish titles. Like I can imagine like No Man's Sky being like a, a four or five million dollar contract, or maybe a six million dollar contract. So. My fear, uh, I know your fear in this is basically the, the ownership of video games is going to die, which yeah, I agree. I think that's that would be a bad thing if it did. But my fear also is that if Sony doesn't compete in this in some, or someone doesn't compete in this in some sort of way, that this will turn from Microsoft getting the do being dominant in this field with this pass and will force developers to take much less lucrative contracts to be on this service 
and we'll have to rely on them to fashion their games to make it appealing for that service, which will then turn games into a different thing entirely. That's what I'm afraid of, really. So uh, there definitely needs to be more competition, and I think after this comes out, I think if Sony was smart, they would get on it quick. What, what do you think? Yeah, um, especially just when there was so much backlash on just how badly set up the tiered system of PlayStation Plus is. Sony really needs to make some moves because just um, Xbox has been clowning on them ever since the whole PlayStation, the whole PlayStation Plus tiering system has come out. Yeah, and it's just been it's just been bad. It it looks like just Xbox throwing eggs constantly at Sony's face on this whole thing. It's just like, like, yeah, um, uh, you guys aren't providing a value for your gamers. You're um, and. Oh my gosh! You're increasing the price of the PlayStation Five. Ew. Well, we're not doing that with our console. And um, with with times getting hard, people are budget conscious. Oh, guess what? We've got Game Pass, and we've got a shit ton of games. And you've got this small, pithy little library of freebies, but you have to be a certain tier of PlayStation Plus to get. Well, that's kind of bullshit. And yeah. just Xbox has been clowning on them hard, and. Sony really needs to take a hard look in the mirror and maybe go, hey, we really shouldn't be complacent about this because if we're complacent about this, we will we will lose the lead. And yeah. um, it's kind of funny, too, because um, in Japan, Xbox has gained some ground in Japan, which is a bit of a freaky incidence because just um, – Usually, Japan has been just dominated by just purely PlayStation and Nintendo stuff. Yeah. But um, with the PlayStation 5 console shortage still being a problem in Japan, and most people already own Switch consoles, just um, a lot of people have been buying up the Xbox consoles and getting on Game Pass in Japan. So it's it's kind of weird when you've got a brand that would never get any ground um get to a point where they've sold um more xbox series s and series x consoles than the total number of xbox one consoles that were ever sold in japan that's that's kind of huge news in a region like japan yes and then in europe i mean playstation's been dominant for a number of years because playstation has been the preferred place to play stuff like fifa and everything but yeah, just if Sony gets lazy and maybe something happens with, with the FIFA license that FIFA tournaments say, hey, Xbox is the preferred thing. Yeah, you you might have people just go, oh, um, Xbox is the place to, you know, uh, get in on, on the world football games and stuff like that. And I've got Game Pass. Sweet. I've got no, no further reason to go back to PlayStation. That's right. That's right. And... If I were Sony, I would start courting like your your best partners, the the people that or the the, the game makers that you don't own yet or yeah, yet that you don't own but are constant part constantly partnering with different games like Square Enix. Like what if they released Valkyrie Elysium on their Game Pass day 1? I mean, that right there would have been an incentive for a lot of people to sign up for that service. Or, hell, Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core, when that releases in December. If they said, oh, yeah, by the way, day one on our on our pass. Like, I would see a lot of people saying, I- I'm going to go get that pass because I want to play that game. To me now, it, it just makes sense to start doing that a- at this point because that's, that's how you're going to have to compete with Microsoft because... Okay, they may not be making doing as much in sales in consoles as you write. Well, maybe they are because there is a shortage of PS5s. But you still you still have the clamoring of want people wanting your console. But the attractiveness of Game Pass is enough for a lot of people to say, "But fifteen dollars a month, and I can just get all these games. Why why don't I do Xbox? But I don't and." It's it's a great deal. So, yeah, I, 
they, they got to start looking at the competition and just saying we we need to start really competing which it's funny when when it comes to the regulation the, with them courting the regulators when it comes to the Activision Blizzard buyout as well because they they seem more and more like a company that just does not want to compete period they just want to own the market and have a stranglehold on it and just not compete which is going to look terrible at some point uh, it, when this thing blows over and when things start to move on Thank you for listening to this podcast segment. The Capital Games Podcast is done every week, and we post it on all your favorite podcast apps, as well as segments on YouTube. If you want to listen to another segment, you can listen to a new one right there on the screen. We also do a movie podcast called the Capital Games Movie Club. If you'd like, you can go ahead and click on that and see all the movies that we have reviewed from that point. Thank you for listening, and we hope to hear from you soon.